sometimes by camera, just being kind of nice or who knows, maybe you don't think this is so nice. <laughs> I don't know. But when we were studying in devotionals earlier this morning, we were talking about God's interruptions, how God could interrupt your day and want you to maybe take some time to relax, back off whatever it is your schedule is, quit doing what you're doing and maybe seek to do something else or to spend some quality time with Him. I know for me, I was dumbfounded when I uh, was put into the place of doing that. I, I was getting ready to record this devotional, as a matter of fact, and uh, this overwhelming exhaustion hit me. I was mentally fatigued. <laughs> I was physically tired. I was just oh, drained. <laughs> and the amazing part of that was that, you know, I went, well, all right, fine, you know, so I kind of said, I won't record right now. I don't really feel like it. So, you know, I'll just skip it. You know, there's, there's enough devotional. So I kind of went back on the website and I was supporting. I, in some of the web ministries that I do, I operate as a support network, so to speak. I undergird some others so that they can post their stuff and they can share their teachings or their pictures or whatever it is that may be inspiring to them that they're passing on to the body of Christ. And in some ways, I was doing that and sharing and, and you know, encouraging people. And suddenly, there was this one site that had this new function, new feature, and I went, wow. Not that in technology that's surprising, because about every day somebody comes up with a new way of doing something on the web. But it was fascinating. So I stopped, I did that for a little bit. Then I, uh, as some of you know, I've been taking the plants down from my porch because it's going to be winter soon. And the, uh, you never know when, <laughs> when it's going to hit in California. So kind of, it's like, well, let's move the plants inside. So I moved them in, you know, and kind of had them around where it inspires me to working near the computer to think about the Lord. And then I designed a, in a little window that has morning light more than anything else in the house. It's the only window that faces the east. I made a little window box and uh, began to put, you know, one or two minor plants and bingo, it started looking pretty cool. So then I finished it up just now and found some more plants and found some more planters to make it look really sharp. <laughs> yeah, actually, it looks pretty cool. So. Whatever it is that God is interrupting your day with, if you are being interrupted in some way, whether through health or some appointment or some schedule of conflict, maybe God wants you to take some time to maybe not clean your fingernails on your book, <laughs> but uh, see, I'm, I'm just as carnal as you are, or dirty, but to um, take a moment, sit back, Enjoy what it is that you're doing with God. Because as soon as you make it into work, it's no longer blessed, really. It's not a blessing to you, and it sure isn't to others. But if you're enjoying it, if it's something that you just want to ah, take a deep breath and thank God for, that you get the chance to participate with Him in, then you're doing it the right way. <laughs> so take a moment today. Sit back. Relax. Look at your life. Look at your friends. Look at your church, your neighbor, your relatives, whatever it may be. Be still. Enjoy it for a moment. Say thank you. Be alone with God for a moment. And thank Him too. Not just for who He is, but for saving you so that you can get to know who He is. God for Himself alone. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? Romans 2 4. Why should a man write and distribute a tract instructing us on how to pray so God will send you the money you need? <laughs> I had no idea what this was going to be. Any of us who have experienced a life in ministry of faith can tell you how the Lord meets our needs. 
Surely we believe that God can send money to his believing children, but it becomes a pretty cheap trick to get excited about the money and fail to give the glory to him who is the giver. In other words, I don't need to ask you for money, me personally. You know, God supplies all my needs. So many are busy using God. They use God to get a job. They use God to give us safety. They use God to give us peace of mind. They use God to obtain success in business. They use God to score a touchdown. They use God to win the fight. They use God sometimes to fight wars. They use God to provide heaven at last. Brethren, we ought to learn, and learn it very soon, that it's much better to have God than to use God, to put God first and have himself for our reward as opposed to getting from God. We should have God himself even if we have only a thin dime to have all the riches and all the influence in the world and not have God with it. What good would that do? Better to have God than to have all the other things. John Wesley believed that the men ought to seek God alone because he is love. I think in our day we are in need of such an admonition as to seek more of God and seek him for himself alone. Get to know your Father in heaven. I mean, this is one point. Let's see what he says. If we become serious-minded about this, we would soon discover that all the gifts of God come along with the knowledge and presence of God himself. You know, one of the things that frustrates me to no end is I hear people talk about either like Christ, the Christ, or Christ. And I keep thinking, well, they obviously don't know him. <laughs> you know, I mean, frankly, you know, I'm Christ is like calling Jesus, sir, you know. Uh, sir, you know, it's just not there, you know. You, you need to get to know him better. Or once you know Jesus, it's kind of like, well, do you realize that Jesus wants you to know the Father? So how about How's you and the Father doing? Oh, well, you know, I don't talk to the Father because he's holy, holy ghost. Now, there's a subject nobody needs to be taught for some reason, or at least it doesn't seem like it, because sometimes they get too ghostly and not holy. You know, I mean, it's all this gold dust and rolling around and barking and sharking and claiming and naming and getting fame and fortune and health and wealth and you know I don't, I don't even know what they do with the Holy Spirit because frankly the way the Holy Spirit speaks to me and spends quality time with myself is a very tender very sensitive very emotive way but not a demonstrative you know we're going to go out there and like blast with the speaking of tongues and we're going to prophesy now have I done all those gifts sure not the way that they do I'm oh, sorry oh, boy Thank God I don't do it like that. But rather, I have had from the Holy Spirit great emotive feeling bringing me to Jesus as he said he would. That he would direct me to Jesus and cause me to remember what sort of things he's taught me. And Jesus has directed me and caused me to get to know the Father in a more intimate way. And the Father has been so delighted in spending time with me that he's revealed his favorite son to me. I mean, it just gets to be like a circle. I'm always spinning around going, boy, every time I get closer to one, he shows me the other. And as the other shows me him, he shows me the other. It just seems like you're kind of like, you know, getting to know all of them a whole lot better. But do you know them? Do you know the difference between the Father and the Son? Do you know the difference between the Son and the Spirit? Do you just kind of throw up a uh, A.L. Trinity <laughs> prayer? Or, you know, do you really know each one as a person that they are? And that's what Toes is trying to say. Get to know your God. Get to know Jesus in a personal and intimate way. Get to know the Father as a loving personage that created you, that is so much more than what you'll ever be able to comprehend, that you get a chance to just at least get a glimpse and allow the Holy Spirit to lead, not just take from him and get a gift and run with it, you know, and then ignore the tender convictions that the Holy Spirit might bring to you. 
I mean, they all like to make them a fire, but somehow I think that's more, you know, smoke than smoke and mirrors than real fire. <laughs> Sorry. It was tons of flame. It wasn't a roaring inferno. Oh well. Such as it is, it is. And people get excited and carried away, so all I can say is today if your day is interrupted, take a moment. Take the time. Build a window box. Enjoy a plant. Spend some time with the Creator of the Universe. Talk to God, your Father. I may be wrong, but He just might have something to say to you. Maybe. Maybe. To me too. Like, what did you knock over? <laughs> just remember to rejoice and be glad, for this is the day the Lord has made.